So I've been making all these videos about insider trading and I often mention how in-house lawyers need to scare their insiders about how good the SEC is at tracking trading blips. Then it occurred to me just how good is the SEC at doing this today on Zippy Point. I'm Brock Romnick and I'm a big fan of you. Okay, so just how closely is the SEC and the other regulators paying attention to who is trading what? In other words, how many people are trading on material non-public information out there and not getting caught? <laughs> the answer is, we don't know. The SEC brings anywhere between a range of 30 to 60 uh, enforcement actions each year based on insider trading allegations every year. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot. There might be more investigations where the agency just figures it's not worth pursuing. And many of the actions the SEC does bring are slam dunks. There's a clear electronic trail that ties the tippers and the tippees, or their message cases with unique fact patterns with well-known people involved sometimes to serve as deterrents. So one, who conducts the surveillance? So let me back up a little and explain who the regulators are here. You have the market abuse unit within the SEC's division of enforcement. It utilizes tracking software it calls Artemis. But the SEC also heavily relies on referrals from FINRA. In this podcast, FINRA's Sam Drady says that FINRA refers over 400 suspicious trades to the SEC each and every year. So as you can see here, FINRA is a big player for market surveillance. It's a self-regulator that the brokers and banks have. The SEC has delegated authority to FINRA to surveil for insider trading, and FINRA uses a surveillance system it calls Sonar, not just to track trades for brokers, but for everyone. The stock exchanges, the NYC and NASDAQ, have, have surveillance obligations, but they have outsourced those to FINRA since Sonar is the powerhouse. How Sonar works. So FINRA's Sonar looks for trading data that might look suspicious just before public companies make major announcements. Their primary focus is the announcements of mergers that you might expect, since that's a sure thing for those engaging in illegal insider trading. The stock price just shoots right up, right, when their merger is announced. But they also track other big announcements that might move the needle of a company's stock price significantly. As you can learn from my vid guide about FINRA chronology letters, a link to which is below, FINRA has a routine where they match trading patterns uh, against the insiders, uh, the people that are subject to blackouts from trading because they have possession of material non-public information, they're on the deal team, or maybe they work in that cafeteria and they brought up a meal and they overheard some conversation. Anyone that's on this list gets a letter from FINRA, a chronology letter that they have to provide very detailed information about who they know and what, and then it gets matched up against fortuitous trades to find out if there's a match. And the, you know, that's how people are caught, electronic breadcrumbs. Two, what does the future hold? So as daunting as FINRA sonar is, it's still missing the refined granular analysis, the true big data stuff that would instantly enable regulators to match aboriginal trades. Tippers giving material now public information to others, known as tippies, is a common form of illegal insider trading. People that live in the same zip code, that work together, that are related. If you had algorithms that could match all that kind of stuff up, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting to the matrix. We're getting to, um, we're getting to Minority Report. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the movies that are old. There's more modern ones, too, where it's scary, man. Westworld? <laughs> Today, the regulators do a lot of this work by hand. What I mean is that FINRA's and the SEC surveillance is essentially a myth mythology of backing into finding insider trading. It relies on knowing the big splashes that companies make first, you know, when they announce a material development, and then they work back in time from there. It's not as proactive as one might hope. The day for a holy grail type of tool may soon it would come in the form of the consolidated audit trail known as CAT. CAT would be much more sophisticated than FINRA's OATS, which dates back to the 1990s. Unfortunately, it's been a long and winding road for CAT, nine years and counting since the SEC first proposed it. It's been a real mess. See this article from Water Technology for a detailed history of how messy it's been. So if CAT is ever implemented, watch out. The number of insider trading cases that the SEC brings really could balloon. But it's an open question as to whether we'll see CAT really happen. The SEC does intend to eventually adopt it, but it keeps getting delayed. And there's a lot of reasons why some on Wall Street don't want to see that. Some big banks have acquired hordes of smaller brokers over the years. And as a result, they might have as many as 30 different legacy broker platforms running. 
synchronizing these legacy platforms would be very expensive and that's necessary for CAT to work. Not to mention all sorts of professional traders who might not want to have their trading scrutinized more closely than it already is. These traders have made it a science to trade without raising suspicion, without impacting the volume or price of a stock. In his podcast, Sam Drady talks about this group of people who are trained not to move volume or price when they trade. White collar crime can be sophisticated and apparently it can pay.